Well, okay. To make the paludarium, I bought this aquarium, in which I will add this divider, as well as these two pieces of glass, to wind up with this paludarium. For the terrarium part of the paludarium, I decided to go to my local park, which is a complete engineering disaster, which means there are a lot of places that are constantly wet. In those places, only plants that like it wet will grow, and it will be wet in the paludarium. For the aquarium part, I scooped up some aqua dirt and oh look, a pretty duck, a cow duck. I'm also taking some water as well as some dirt scooped up with this net. Let's start building. First I'm adding the dirt to the aquarium part. Next is the water. I'm planting some beautiful crypto corinus as well as this plant of which I always forget the name. It can grow out of the water. For the terrarium part, I'm starting by making a false bottom, which will allow for excess moisture to be stored below the soil instead of in the soil. On top of that comes the soil. I planted these plants but forgot to hit record. I'm also planting some spider plants because they have proven before that they can live in closed ecosystems as well as some grass because why not. That looks pretty nice I think. So now the terrarium part is finished. Or is it? I bet you were wondering what those pieces of glass are for. Well, they are an extension of the terrarium part above the aquarium part. I'm not planting anything here because I'm curious to see if anything will grow here on its own. Maybe some grass or some moss that has yet to appear. And that means the paludarium is finished for now. After two days the aquarium part had cleared up a little. The creature you're looking at is Corexa punctata, more commonly known as the lesser water boatman. A beautiful little insect. In fact, the first insect in a closed ecosystem of mine that is not in its larvae state. While doing research I came upon a lot of conflicting information, so you'll hear more about this stunning critter in a future update. These seem to be some kind of worm or larva, possibly bloodworms that are wiggling about in their home, a tube they make themselves. This appears to be a red mosquito larva. It's certainly a Chironomidae larva. Fun fact, what comes out of a red mosquito larva isn't an actual true mosquito. Here we have a beautiful hydra hunting on some small crustaceans. If you look closely you can see the Daphnia which is captured and swallowed whole. Here you can see that the Hydra's tentacles are constantly being hit and therefore are retracted quite a bit. I'll speed up the footage so you can see them expand and contract. This is one gigantic tube effects worm. Let's take a look at the paludarium one week in. 
If you look closely, you can see a lot of tiny short tubes. The worms that are waving about in those tubes are tubifex worms, a species from the genus Tubifex. When I disturb them, they quickly hide in their cocoons. Over there, lurking in the distance, is a big fat hydra with a big fat butt. This is a mystery worm. And these are two more mystery worms. Sometimes bladder snails, Visa fontinalis, just like to show off and be pretty and do tricks. And you kind of just have to let them. Also present in the aquarium part of this paludarium ecosphere are water mites. Nido. Something you'll see these bladder snails do quite often is float up and down in the water. I'm not sure why they do this. They breathe air and have an air bladder, hence their name. So maybe when they have air in their bladder and crawl down, and then lose their grip there, they float up. And when they have no air, and they lose their grip from the water surface, they sink. Or maybe it's deliberate and just a quick way of vertical transport. Although they do have an impressive stop speed of up to 17 centimeters per minute. Lightning fast! This is a remarkably long hydra. This is a little sea shrimp. Gotta love ostracods. This is a different type of snail, Planorbis planorbis, from the family of ram's horn snails, chilling with the tube effects. I have come to an awful realization. These are tube effects, and these are boogie worms, which means that I have wrongly called tube effects nematodes in all previous videos. An error I can never fix anymore. But I can do it right from now on. At least I wasn't wrong about the boogie worm part. Here are some snail eggs. There are a lot of these little bugs in the paludarium. They look a lot like some sort of boatsman or back swimmer. If you look at their small size, you would think they belong to the family of pygmy back swimmers. Plydae. However, Plydae all have in common that they are very round and fat. However, these insects right here are quite flat, which leads me to believe that they are from the family of Corixidae, the water boatmen. However, those are generally a few times bigger, so I have no idea what species these might be. I do know that they are quite cute. This is what I like to call the Hydra pit, because, well, you know, there are a lot of Hydra here. These crustaceans right here think they are really tough, but you know what? There's nothing cool about playing with your life. If you look through the aquarium from this side, you can see the terrarium, which is a nice bridge into the next part of the video, the terrarium part. I already put the glass on top, but I want to monitor the paludarium for a few more days before I completely seal it. What we have here is a plant that is already quite big and will probably only get bigger. It will be interesting to see how that unfolds. This plant here is a Fragaria vesca, a wild strawberry. This is one of the two spider plants, Chlorophytum commosum vitatum. Nothing really grew here yet, but that's not very surprising. The grass has grown quite a bit in just a week. A new plant has sprouted. I have no clue what it is yet. Here's a pretty side shot, because you know, why not? 
this plant already started to grow quite an intricate root structure. You'll also notice that there are quite a few sprouts deep down in the ground. So this is the Paludarium ecosphere. I'm really happy with how it looks and I can't wait to find out what will happen and how this thing will develop. If you don't want to miss other projects and future updates and you haven't already well, you're going to have to subscribe. Thanks for watching.